The red sea urchin likes to give hugs. Hi, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist. And welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you. It is my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them through science, stories, and art. If you are new, welcome. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the red sea urchin. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Mesocentratus franciscanus are known as red sea urchins. I sure know how to pick animals with hard scientific names. Where can the red sea urchin be found? Their habitat range is in the eastern Pacific Ocean. They range from Alaska along the coast to Baja, California, Mexico. They prefer rocky coasts and kelp forests. Just like Anakin, they avoid sandy and silty terrain. Red sea urchins can be found from the lowest tide to 90 meters or 300 feet deep. They are found in intertidal zones, but don't like being in water that has too high of wave action. Now that we know where to find the red sea urchin, what are we looking for? Sea urchins are invertebrates with hard exterior shells and soft insides. They look like pin cushions. They range in color between bright red, light red, to dark maroon. The red sea urchin is a domed, radially symmetrical, segmented animal with many spines reaching out of it. The body is segmented into 10 equal parts that are fused together creating a thin shell. This part of the body is called the test. The spines protrude out of the test in all directions. These spines are rigid and sharp and connect to the test in ball and socket joints. This gives each spine a range of mobility. I know some people th who think that sea urchins are stiff creatures and can't move, but that isn't the case. They move slowly. In between these rigid spines are long thin tube feet to aid in movement, senses, and light detection. The tube feet end in a single suction cup. This allows the sea urchin to climb things and stick to their habitat. They use water pressure in their body to control these tube feet. On the flat side of the test, known as the oral surface, is the mouth. They have five pointed sharp teeth, known as Archimedes' lantern. They look like the aperture of a camera. They point inward around the mouth and can crush and scrape food. So how big do these animals get? The red sea urchin is the largest species of sea urchin found in the Pacific Northwest. In California, they reach a test size of 5 inch diameters and spine length of 2 to 3 inches. In British Columbia, Canada and North, they get larger. They reach 7 inch test diameter and 3 inch spines. It is thought that they continually grow until they die. As they get larger, their rate of growth slows down immensely. Okay, here's a fact that I didn't expect and was surprised at. How long do you think a sea urchin lives for? See, I guessed five years. It was thought that sea urchins lived between seven and ten years. That's pretty good. Nope. Specimens in California have lived up to 50 years. That is pretty good, right? Nope. The largest species found in Canada and Alaska live for 100 years. That's pretty good, right? Nope. The oldest recorded sea red sea urchin was 200 years old. Now that is pretty good. Let's get into some behaviors. What do they do? Well, they eat and walk around. They form groups up to 10 individuals. 
This will be a close-knit group of sea urchins that spend most of their time together. There can be several groups in an area. They can help each other and feel each other, keeping tabs on the group numbers. That is so sweet. There, they also have a limited sight organ that can detect light levels. It has been shown that sea urchins will react quickly to a sudden shadow appearing. They point all of their spines in that direction. Okay, now we know what they look like and some fun behaviors. What do red sea urchins eat? They eat plankton, algae, and kelp. It seems like the longest living animals eat the smallest and simplest animals and plants. They love feeding off bull, brown, and giant kelp. A group of sea urchins can clear a kelp forest if they are not kept in balance. They are a crucial part in food chains. They clean up kelp forests in small numbers, but if left to overpopulate the area, they will decimate the whole forest. This is known as a trophic cascade. The ecosystem needs animals like sea otters, octopuses, California sheephead, sunflower stars, wolf eels, some crabs, birds, and humans to keep the red sea urchins in check. We can't take too many or too few. It will mess up the whole ecosystem. Too few sea urchins and the kelp forest will grow too crazy. Too many and it gets deforested. The IUCN red list has them listed as not evaluated. It is hard to do a population evaluation on a species that is so scattered or so numerous. Humans use sea urchins in the fish market. It is sold in Japan for the eggs called uni. It is a delicacy. Sea urchins can be males or females. They produce in a spray and prey event through a hole in the top of their test. It is my favorite part of the adventure. It is time to discover my encounter with the Red Sea Urchin. How did I meet it? I live near the Puget Sound. I have seen them many times in my adventures to the beaches, tidal zones, and aquariums. I love how they look and feel. Yes, feel. Did you know that sea urchins can give the cutest hugs? Place your finger very gently on a few of the spines. The two feet will all turn to feel what is going on at the tip of your finger. They will feel you, stick to you, and try to figure out what you are. This, in turn, causes all the surrounding spines to come together in the cutest hug. Just be careful. You don't want to hurt yourself or the animal. If you find that you stepped on or get spiked by a sea urchin, you want to get the big pieces out of you. The rest will dissolve. I know it feels like you should dig out the tiny pieces, but leave them be. You most likely got all of the physical spines out of you with the big piece. Sea urchin spines are coated in a pigment that can be left in your skin. This pigment dissolves over time. I have seen people dig at their skin trying to get rid of the sea urchin spines that they thought were in their skin. They were just tearing their skin apart, spreading the pigment, and hurting themselves even more. If you do hurt a sea urchin, don't worry too much. They can regrow their spines like a sea star can regrow its arms. So where did I see these red sea urchins? The point to find zoo and aquarium, of course. It was in their touch tank section. It is a shallow pool with sea stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers for the public to interact with. It has a marine scientist present to make sure that it is safe. They also give great information. I talked with this lovely lady for a while until a family showed up with curious kids. The sea urchins were hanging out. I got a sea urchin hug and told the kids to get one too. They were thrilled. I love teaching people new things. These are fun animals. I love sea life. And that was our adventure with the red sea urchin. As the final details come into focus, I will call this adventure finished.
Thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. I do the best that I can to post their content every other weekend. These videos kind of take a long time to make. This month, as a community, we're going to support Autism Speaks. They're an organization that helps raise awareness about autism. They, um, they do research into identifying autism at an early age, as well as they help young adults with autism transition into adulthood. For those who don't know, autism is a condition where people have challenges with social skills, repetitive behavior, and heightened senses. They just experience the world a little differently than we do. I know it isn't Autism Awareness Month, but I have something that I already have a charity that goes in its place, so I put it here. I will leave a link in the description. If you would like to help my channel, I sell my art in the forms of originals and museum quality prints. I'm also designing stickers, posters, and cards. Uh, I'm trying to get those up onto my website now. I link, I'll leave links in the description. You are important to me. And remember to spread love and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you on our next adventure.